Oh God. It's been so long since I've seen everyone. <laughs> Kidding. I missed a week. I missed one week and I am sorry about that. There was reasons for the things. It was partly due to me just cramming all the fun into my life that I can. And also this damn dangled project just took so long. <sighs> oh, sucking at life really is time consuming. It eats up a lot of free time. In this week's episode, I'm trying, I'm making a, a, uh, a I'm making a reversible crop top. I don't know how I got the idea. I think I saw a bodysuit. This is what happened. There was a bodysuit I saw some moons ago, um, and it was like, pleather it was very shitty pleather but anyway, it was pleather and it zipped up and I liked the style I like the idea of it but it fit me atrociously my little child body <laughs> Ew. so I always kind of wanted it. in the back of my head I was like I want something like that because I'm a creature of the night and it makes me sound like a hooker <laughs> so I own a crop top that I quite like I'm all about them crop tops and I thought it'd be cool to make it and you know, basically just copy that pattern, but have it be pleather and zip up. And then when I went to look for the fabric at Fabricland, I mean, I guess it's more so like older women that go there and not um, people in their late twenties pretending that they're 19 still. Uh, so there wasn't like a huge selection for pleather. Honestly, there wasn't even any like black just simple black pleather. It was all colored. It was all, you know, like reds and navies, browns, stuff like that, which is fine, but not what I'm going for. However, I did find this material. What's the first thing that was happening? What's I was just listening to a lot of Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> so I found this material. There's a little scrap of it. The one side is a, like a suede-like material. But then the other was this red pleather. So it gave me, or faux leather, I don't know. It gave me the idea, gave me the idea to make the shirt reversible. <laughs> Cause both sides are quite cool. However, however, I have been thinking it's funny lately to, to not look up how to do stuff at all and then just attempt making it. Um, like I could have looked up like how to easily and actually <laughs> make a reversible garment. But I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna use my little noggin and <laughs> I don't know, see what happens. So yeah, basically I'll be making two crop tops, put, <laughs> putting them together and then that way it'll hide my seams and everything and it'll look nice in either way. <laughs> What's next on my list of things to tell you about? I've mentioned almost everything on my list. And again, I'm gonna be putting a zipper up the front. Um, so that's an added little challenge. I haven't, I've used zippers before, but not on this channel yet, so. Oh. Oh. Ah. Ah. What's your best dolphin noise? Ah. Ah. Why do people watch this? Why is anyone watching this right now? Stop it. Stop what you're doing. Leave, <laughs> get out. Okay, fix. Let's get into it. <laughs> I'm so annoyed. I didn't film making a pattern this week because I knew making the shirt itself would be quite time consuming. I used this floral crop top as my basis because I like the fit, the length of the crop, and the scoop of the neck. I'm going to be adding a zipper to the front of my crop top as well. I'm checking to see that it's the right length and yay, it is. Since this fabric is faux leather, any holes or pinpricks you make in it will be noticeable, so I got clips to hold the fabric together. These are actually pretty popular in the world of sewing, however I don't think I'd ever use them regularly. They are great for getting the fabric to lie very flat, but they also don't get into the deep nooks and crannies the way pins do. Plus, I get a little hard every time I stab myself with a pin. Being crazy is fun. Place your pattern on the fabric with the fold in the proper place and with the stretch of the fabric. I almost bung the fabric stretch up, but I happened to get lucky. 
I pressed really hard with the rotary cutter to make sure I had a clean cut through both layers of fabric. I didn't look on the opposite side of the fabric, so I didn't realize that there was this gray bit on the red side, so I will use this front piece for the black suede side of the shirt. Then I cut out another front piece and made sure that the red side of the fabric was positioned properly. And now that we have two sexual looking front pieces, cut out two back pieces. And look at that, we have two opposite sets of front and back pieces. I think this is how you're supposed to make it? Maybe? Who knows? I did a test run using two shirts I own that are really similar and think maybe I figured out how to sort of make it look alright and not mess it up too much when trying to turn it right side out. Maybe? I bought a reversible zipper head. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a complete reversible zipper and I couldn't find a silver zipper head to match the zipper I bought. So we're going to put this shit together and hope it doesn't look too janky. According to the back, you're supposed to take off the zipper stops at the top of the zipper, take the old zipper off, and slide on the new one. The zipper stops were incredibly hard to get off though. It says to use nail clippers to bend them off, but I tried a few things to manipulate them off and after a long time, finally was able to yank them off with pliers. After taking the original head off and sliding the new one on, something cool happened. I realized the new head was too wide for the zipper width and wasn't closing it properly when I pulled up. So that was a significant amount of time of my life I lost struggling with these f***ing top stops. I went through my mess of on hand zippers and found one that was a width that would work and the color of it would still go well with the fabric. Instead of trying to take off the top stops again, I had to cut the length of the zipper to make it fit with the crop top anyway, so after cutting it, I slid the zipper off the bottom and put the new one on. Once I did though, the black head with the bronzy zipper looked 100% janky, so I decided I had to pick up a black zipper so that I didn't look like complete trash while wearing it. When I placed the crop tops together, they were looking like a crop top shape, which is a plus. So that the cut I make for the front zipper will be the same on both front pieces, I clipped them together, folded them in half, clipped some more, and started slowly cutting up the center fold. Then I started working on the first crop top. There is no rhyme or reason as to which one I wanted to work on first, I just grabbed one. I clipped the sides together but then realized that the red pleather for this one was the correct side of the fabric and reclipped. Forewarning, there is a rampant amount of confusion in this video. If you haven't already noticed. <laughs> when I went to sew down the sides, the stupid fabric kept moving when I went to sew it together because it is very slippery. So I fabric glued it in place first and then sewed it together. I also glued and sewed the shoulders together. Fun stuff happened when I went to try it on though. This fabric has 2000% less give than the original floral crop top I based it off of. And because I'm dumb in the head, I didn't think of that and didn't add on enough width to compensate for that. Anyway, it's way too insanely tight, even for my standards. The armholes are also too small and tight. I'm going to add in squares to the sides to boost the width. I went with 6.5 inches by something. Yes, that measurement is 6.5 inches by something. I don't remember what it was. Do you even care anyway? I cut out four pieces, two for each crop top, and went on my merry f***ing way. After stitch ripping the side seam, I clipped in the newly cut square. I also fabric glued the squares in place first. When I tried the garment on, I pretty obviously made the squares too wide and needed to take them in a bunch. But I didn't care as much because at least I could breathe. Because the zipper isn't attached yet, I clipped the front together so I could get a somewhat accurate measurement for how much to take in. Also, using clips for this was really obnoxious. I did use regular old pins to mark how big I want the armholes to be and how far down the neckline will fall. My top looks like it's about to go in for plastic surgery. This is the face I make right before I sneak into your house while you sleep and wreck up the place. I used the clips to get an idea of how much I wanted to take in from each side. For the back, I took in 2 inches at the bottom and then drew a diagonal line to the top. For the front, I don't even know what exact measurements I used, I just tried to make it look like it will fit with the contour of my body and then copied it on the other side. Oh, and yeah, I started using pins here because I realized for at least the black material, which is the correct side of this top, you won't see the pin marks. Don't tell me how to live my life. Next I cut away some of the fabric from the armhole. I did this poorly though. Admittedly, really, really poorly. I didn't shape the hole correctly and made it too straight across because I'm a dumb, stupid moron. So yeah, I took more fabric away than I should have, which is like the number one rule of what not to do when sewing because guess what, it's way harder to fix. I learned from this and for the second armhole took away less fabric. I will be fixing the other one in the future, I guess. 
I did better with the neckline though. I clipped the hell out of it to make sure that nothing was moving around and gave it a natural curve. After trying on the top again, I was experiencing some gapping material around the boobies, so I added in some darts to give it a better fit. My dart width starts at 3 quarters of an inch and is about 3.5 inches long. Then I stitch ripped out the square that I cut too much away from. So that I didn't have to cut out too big of a square again, I traced the piece that I didn't mung up and cut out a new piece to match it. Then I actually sewed everything together. And repeated everything with the second crop top using the first one as a template. Finally, I have two tops that will become one. Spice Girls reference. Fold one of the tops inside out and start clipping them right sides together all of the way around the neckline. Then sew it together. Once that's done, turn it right side out and clip down the seam with a firm and clean edge. Then top stitch it down. Isn't this cute? Me thinking that I have everything figured out and that I know what I'm doing. So, so very cute. <laughs> So next I started folding in the raw edges of the armholes. Because the goal is for this to be double sided, I essentially am trying to hem them at the same time by having the garment right side out and folding in each top's armholes at the same time to create a clean seam. And believe me, I tried. I really did try. But I kept having one shirt have more material than the other, aka things were definitely not lining up cleanly. This is 100% due to the janky and haphazard way I crafted the two tops. I even tried taking in more material from the one shirt to help make things fit and it seemed like it might have worked until I actually did sew the armholes together and came out with this. The tops ended up being too damn different and when sewn flush, it did not look good. And so, folks, I am going to finally give up on having it be reversible and just commit to one damn top. Sometimes in life, you just have to cop it and move forward. I'm copping it. I stitch ripped the top seams and decided that due to the amount of damage I had caused to the black top, even though it is the fabric that I liked better, I had to stick with the red faux leather. Let's finally get into this zipper. I removed the black reversible head and replaced it with the original one. Place your zipper so that it lines up with one of the raw edges of the shirt with the zipper at the top, right sides together. Then clip in place. You'll be sewing along this edge with a zipper foot. I'm actually not confident this is a zipper foot, but this is the one I used and it seems, seems, get it? Puns, bitches. Anyway, it does the job. You want to have the side of it completely flush with the edge of the zipper as you sew. Another tip for sewing on a zipper, depending what end you're sewing from, undo the zipper and start your stitch. Then when you get close to the zipper head, do the zipper back up so that the width of the head doesn't end up messing with your stitch line. When that's done, clip the other side down, flush with the garment's edge, and sew down. Then top stitch either side of the zipper to make it look like you pretend you're a professional who knows what they're doing. I hem the neckline next. Fold down the top of the zipper underneath the shirt hem to hide it. I have no idea what the measurement was for how much I turned over for the hem. Really, I just did whatever looked nice. I also learned that if the curves of the hem keep rippling, you can cut in little notches so that it lies flat. Just don't cut them too deep. Then I hem the armholes. Again, no idea what measurements. I just went for it. I forgot with a zipper that I'm going to have to fold up the fabric and sew it down at the bottom of the zipper. Really, I could have just folded up the zipper at the same time because I'm gonna to have to fold it up anyway, but I also need to make every mistake possible on this before finishing it because I hate my sanity and want it gone for me for good this time. Anywho, so I stitched up the bottom of the zipper a bit, folded up the fabric and sewed it in place. Then I hem the rest of the bottom of the garment. For the zipper, I ended up trimming it and like I said, folding it up. Sewing it in place with my machine would be difficult because of the amount of bulk, so I could hand sew it, but I'm sick of this shit, so I fabric glued it instead. And I was so, so close to being finished. So damn close. Stupid tan lines for days over here. When I put the shirt on, it was too loose along the bottom and I didn't come this f***ing far to not have this stupid shirt not fit like a damn glove. However, because I didn't use a zipper that undoes at the bottom, like on every jacket you've ever owned, I can't actually completely undo the shirt and I have to slide it over my head like the poop face I am. Therefore, I'm adding in some Velcro at the back to add some width to the garment so I can fit it over my head but still have it fit tightly. First, I'm gonna take in the back a couple more inches and then add the Velcro. The amount of Velcro I added was two inches. I glued the Velcro on first to keep it in place and then sewed it down. I sewed a box shape around the edges of the Velcro and then a diagonal line through the center. And holy crapping butt stuff, I'm actually finished. <laughs>
I also like doing boo. Sound just boo make again. Ah! Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. Hello, this is the outro. So this is what I call um, failing forward. I didn't coin that phrase. I've just heard it. It's when, you know, you don't reach the goal that you intended, but you still keep going forward and you learn something. I didn't actually learn anything. Why would I contemplate on things and actually move forward using the lessons I've learned? That's just, that's for dorks. I'm not a dork. And I'm not confident what I'm talking about anymore. No, but serialistly, serialistly. Did the end product turn out exactly how I had imagined? No, like it wasn't reversible, but the actual shirt itself, I do quite enjoy. I am like proud of it. I wanted to give up so many times though during it. Like this was such a frustrating project. You know, it's like, you know, like funny rage almost. Or like I'm so mad, but it's kind of funny. It, it wasn't. <laughs> It's not even funny anymore. Not even funny anymore. If you try and make projects that are above your skill set, you're not gonna have a good time. I bit off a little more than I could chew, but sometimes you have to, you know, reach for the stars and uh, just do your best. I did my best. So the end product was giving me mad 90s vibes. You know, pleather, 90s crop top 90s and that's part of the explanation for <laughs> my reveal I don't, I don't even know what happened there it was just late at night and stuff kept being really funny to me so i just <laughs> kept doing it <laughs> um for the velcro at the back it does like sh it does show a little bit when i'm wearing it it is kind of like, like what is that so i would say like it would actually be kind of cooler to have maybe zippers there or something or like, I don't know, when it laces up. Laces out. So many references in this video. So this video is so long, that's what happens when you just keep messing stuff up. And sorry this video has been delayed. If you would like to punish me in any way, just uh, send me a DM, a direct message, and let me know how I should torture myself. If you like the content I'm making, subscribe to my channel and then I can make more content and it'll be on time, probably. Um, honestly though, like, see that little button? Subscribe. Don't be watching these videos if you ain't subscribed. There's not much I can do about it except tell you that you're a bad person. Pot calling the kettle black. <laughs> Give this video a, a juicy, meaty, fat thumbs up. I'm not even confident likes actually do anything. I think it's more based on views. I don't know, how does the internet work? Someone also DM that to me. Thanks. Next week I'll have a video. It'll be real. I might have some human interaction in it. What? what? That's everything, that's all. Drops of Jupiter in her hair. Bye. Bye. <gasps> Bye.